The important point here is the bees. As you've heard, the bumblebee shouldn't really be able to fly. Those wings are way too small to lift that chubby little body off the ground. In fact, it's a bit of a conundrum also for the mainstream scientists. Now, I've been hearing that, you know, scientists don't know how bumblebees fly or saying that they shouldn't be able to fly for literally for decades. And it's never been really true. What, what is true is that we didn't fully understand the aerodynamics of bee flight. You know, we know that they're using aerodynamics to fly. You know, there's, you, could, you could measure all kinds of things that's happening. But how do they exactly, how do they generate the lift that they do? If you treat the bee like a tiny airplane, they, their wings are not big enough to generate lift in the same way that airplanes do. But of course, bees are not airplanes. They are flapping their wings very fast in, in a specific pattern. In the 1990s, it was discovered that, we, that the wings of bees generate what are called wingtip vortices at the tips of their wings. And then scientists, OK, well, maybe these wingtip vortices, like little tornadoes of wind at the end of the at the end of the wingtips, maybe they're generating lift. And that's what's giving them the extra lift that we're not we're not seeing otherwise. And it turns out that they do not generate the extra lift. So then what's the relevance of them? Well, what the wingtip vortices do is they prevent the bees basically from stalling. Uh, and what that means is that they can they can have a much greater, a much steeper attack angle for their wings as they're flapping them on the up and on the downstroke without stalling out, without losing the, you know, the, the, the pressure underneath them to keep their lift. So at this point, we basically do understand how bees fly. They generate lift in different ways. There's, there's other things as well. I'm giving you a very simplified explanation. But there are different ways that they generate lift with their wings. They're able to do so um, you know, because of these, you know, these unique aerodynamic features of them. And yeah, they beat them really fast and they fly. It looks weird from our macroscopic, our big you know, perspective and we're thinking of things like airplanes and whatnot. But it, you know, the physics work a little bit differently at those scale. Um, you know, that's why bugs can walk on water, but people can't. You know, there, there are different, uh, different forces predominate and their, their wings are just different. So there is no enduring mystery about how bees can fly. Scientists have figured it out. They did so by doing actual scientific investigation. What we're seeing in this video is really just pure and quite absurd speculation. So they don't fly you know, aerodynamically. That's silly. There's no evidence for that. The notion that they generate a magnetic field around them. I mean, magnetic fields are measurable. That's like the most testable thing, maybe the only testable thing that they really said in the video. There is no evidence that bees are you know, flapping their wings at a resonance frequency of anything or that they generate magnetic fields or that they're levitating. I know if you show the video of the bees flying in slow motion, again, from our perspective, it kind of looks like they're levitating, but no, they're flying. Uh, so there's no positive evidence for any of the claims that they say. It's pure nonsense. And the claim that we don't understand how bees fly is also now incorrect. Scientists have worked out a lot of the physics, the aerodynamics of bee flight, enough to explain how they're generating the lift that they do. So this one's just a no.